Hi, welcome back. It's Brendan here, and I'm here with David Stacker from Nourish. If you haven't checked out Nourish yet, you want to do that, check out the website. What is the website? Um, nourishrestaurants.com. Nourishrestaurants.com. We've got some really cool, healthy fast food, but it's not just, I wouldn't call it fast food, I'd call it a restaurant, but it kind of is fast food, I yeah. suppose, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 And I suppose today we're going to touch on, David's got a, a thriving business, and my business has grown, strength and education, and strength and success, and and as a consequence, and, and with the uh, the old age and years ticking on, um, you've got two old timers here, <laughs> if you want to call us that, that have been in the, in the industry for 10 years. So how's your sort of training and health movement side of things going these oh. days? Well, um, I guess that's why it's good to have you here, because I can ask you questions. Yeah. Uh, my yeah. movement has definitely suffered. Um, sitting down more, um, you know, not in the gym as much, so less client time in the gym. Um, more time behind a laptop, hunched over, posture's not great at the minute. Yeah. Uh, I'd definitely say my health, as in physical health, has definitely, definitely got worse over the, over the last probably five years. So as business health and wealth increases, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, your physical health and wealth kind of decreases. Yeah, there's a, there's a, it's a conflict if you're, yeah. if you're not careful. And I had a discussion with one of my clients, and he's a genuine friend now, very, very successful guy in his 50s. And I trained him for quite some time and he dropped a lot of weight for his 50th birthday. But he, he made a comment to me and I, and I challenged it. I challenged it and I still challenge it, although I'm wrestling with it. But the comment was something like, your wealth and your health are like inversely proportional. Right. Yeah. And, he, and he almost said that and, he, and I kind of said, no, that's not the yeah. case. I'm not having it. I'm not yeah. having it. <laughs> but at the same time, you do have to wrestle with it. You do have to have a strategy, don't you? You do, yeah. I mean, what would your, well, what's your strategy for that then? I think the first thing's first. You, you've got to set yourself a target that, you, that is realistic. It's, yep. it's no different to nutrition now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Set yourself a target that you know you can do. So for me, it's a minimum of three 30-minute movement sessions per week. Now, I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're busy, when you've got meetings yes. and schedules and you're meeting other people and you're coaching and mentor, it's bloody hard work sometimes yeah. to get those three and you, you've got to make it happen. So I do, I do three 30-minute sessions as a minimum. And what, um, would they, what would they be? Well, I, I try to... A goal for me is to elevate my metabolism, elevate my metabolic yeah. rate or with every single session. So we, I've cut out any kind of steady state plodding, yeah. as I call it. So the first one I'd normally do, which is an easy one, is I'd do a sprints type session so I get out on the road dynamic warm up and do some sprints and, and you know it can be as simple as sprint for three lamp posts jog for three lamp posts yeah. you know 15 minutes and then a bit of a cool down that sort yeah. of thing second session I try and lift heavy once a week if in some capacity so I've got my garage gym I've got my squat rack my deadlifts and um, that kind of stuff set up so I'll do really pick four exercises I'll do four or five sets of five or six reps on each exercise I'll pair them up so right. I'll do like a push press, upper body, yep. superseted with say like a stiff leg deadlift or a deadlift. And I'll do a bent over row, uh, pulling movement, superseted with a single leg or a, like a split squat or a yeah. lunge or something like that. So just keep it super simple. With a warm up, with a bit of stretching at the end is basically 30 minutes, okay. get some tunes on. And then the third session I try and do is more of like a body weight, metabolic type session. Yep. So we'll take the kettlebells out into the garden and do it might be something like a Tabata kettlebell swing round, so maybe 20 on, 10 yeah. off. Although I did that last week and it <laughs> killed me. Um, so I'm, I'm ch I'm, I've changed that to 20 on, 20 off, like right. a modified Tabata. Yeah. Um, so we do like 10 rounds of that, and then some body weight stuff, calisthenics, press-ups, yeah. crawls, and uh, some even some shuttle runs and things yeah. like that within that skipping. Cool. So it's doable. How it's would, hard, but how important is progress then in that training? And if you do, you monitor it, or is it a I'll see what I feel like kind of session by session? It ten, at the moment, I'm kind of in a a phase where I, it's it's not a priority for me to be getting say stronger as such, yeah. and um, and so I, but I do have goals. I don't want to. Yeah. I want to get something out of it. I want to get some overload in there. Yeah. So with the strength stuff. You know, I am trying to beat what I did last week, Good. each week, and I think that's really important to, to have that. Uh, and then I do some monitoring of my velocities and my power on my body weight movements. So yeah. I've got like an accelerometer that I hook myself up to, and um, and we get some peak power and mean power outputs yeah. and velocity. So I know sort of when I'm 
slacking, yeah. basically. How would um, someone who doesn't have access to such equipment, mm. how would they monitor the progress on something like that? I'd say I'd say buy a buy a push band off me. That's the first thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 now the distributor from. But um, yeah, if if you it's it's easy. Before that was around, feedback existed. So if you had tape measure, you can lay a tape measure out along the floor, and you can do sort of horizontal jumps, and you know if you've got like 150 to 180, whatever it may be, you, you have a standard there. Yeah. Um, if you're doing, if you want to get velo- if you want to get power out of it, then you need to have fewer reps and train fresh so even like the old jump and chalk on the wall you know classic stuff like that is is good but before we had accelerometers we were doing speed and power work with time sets so you you could literally see how many reps you can do in five seconds of you of a bench press or a um a squat or something like that so say if you're doing a squat say if you're doing a bench press bench press bit easier if you're trying to get anything out of it like some force some power a simple method is to do is to do five reps in five seconds. Right. You, you put the weight on that allows you to do five reps in five seconds, and as you get more powerful, that weight will increase. Right. So your you, your time is the key. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So just just simple things like that, and then on the endurance, on the metabolic side, to make sure you're making progress there, you should record the number of reps you do. Yeah. So if it's kettlebell swings, you know that you've got to do whatever it may be, 12 reps in 20 seconds yeah. to get that that output and you're looking for that. If it's burpees, it's the same. It'll be probably 12 to 14 reps in every 20 seconds. And then you've got like targets to meet there. So before any of the gadgets existed, yeah. mate, there was ways of measuring and there's means. Yeah, yeah. And, and to be honest, they're as good as anything. Yeah. Um, the speed and power stuff is slightly different, but yeah. you know, I was saying earlier, I've got my, my missus is training quite hard at the moment, so I've hooked her up to, to the accelerometer now, so I'm, I'm tracking her jump heights and velocities and power <laughs> outputs, and I, I can tell, you need, to, you need to jump higher, you need to go faster. Um, so she's, Which I'm sure she really enjoys. She's enjoying that, yeah. yeah. She's really engaged in the process. Oh, yeah, she absolutely. Herself, she's an athlete now, yeah, that's right. Nearly a client. Yeah, exactly. But I think... The thirty, the thirty minutes times three is a good basic yeah. rule of thumb, and and you've got to allow yourself to to achieve those goals. So Carly, for example, my my other half, you know, when she trains every day, and the goal for her is initially was just move thirty minutes a day, just choose something. So it might be swimming today, it might be a jog or a walk, a fast walk tomorrow, it might be one of the body weight sessions that I put together for her the next day. Yep. Um, she always puts them off till the end of the week because they're pretty horrible. Yeah. But but that's that's achievable. Just yeah. move yourself. Move yeah. move your body for 30 minutes a day, yeah. mate. And then what, looking at um, progress for yourself, how long do you think it's going to be before you start to pick up to probably back to where you were? You know, we, We've mentioned before those these 24, 25-year-old SSC yeah. Up and coming coaches these who are doing, yeah, these whippersnappers who are doing, you know, three good tough sessions a day. Yeah. You know, yeah. Do you think you'll ever get back there? I doubt it. I don't. My, I'm me personally. I'm quite a compartmentalized individual. So, if I'm an athlete, I'm an athlete. Yeah. You know, I, I want to train and I want to be the best I can be there. My bucket list is to get my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. Yeah. I should have probably had it by now, but again, it's the compartmentalized yeah. syndrome. Yeah. So at the moment, for me, I'm in this phase of like, right, I'm building this business right yeah. now. So the next three to five years, I'm very, very focused on that. And yeah. obviously, the next three to five years, your health can plummet yeah. if you're not yeah. careful. So I've got to be careful and get that balance. But I think it's probably going to be three to five years where it'll take me to, to build up and get into that phase where, where I'm at with it. What about you? I'm like yourself, you know, business and nourish um, is my key focus at the moment. Training is um, what keeps me moving, stops me from getting out of bed with a bad back in the morning yeah. or achy joints. Um, so my goals at the moment, you know, over the next probably 12 months, um, I still want to squat 200 for a, tr- yeah. for a double. Nice. Um, yeah, yeah. It, that's that's my, my plan for, for this time next year. I've probably said that for three years now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but I am working on that, you know, more hip movement work, uh, definitely more power work at the moment, mm. uh, which I'm really enjoying because it keeps my sessions light, yeah. small, yeah. Uh, yeah. short, should I say. Um, but again, m- most of my gym work is all based around what's going to make me get through my day better. Mm-hmm. Um, I love foam rolling. Um, mm-hmm. I have a love-hate relationship with a hockey ball. Yeah. Um, or yeah. should I say, you know, my glutes and my lower back does. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah. and, and that's every day for me. That's to make yeah. sure that I, when I'm sat on a 
a cramp train at six foot five it's not nice being sat on a cramp train yeah, yeah. Um, unfolding yourself out of the seat as you get to Leeds yeah so all of the kind of things that I do training wise are all built into what's gonna make me better listening to a podcast yeah. while I'm doing 20 minutes on a yeah. foam roller at night again it, it works on both things it works on for my, my health but also wealth in terms mm. of learning mm. Mm. Um, but gym time you know, I keep a couple of clients on for the simple reason that they make me get to the gym yeah. and do work, which I can't do at home, and makes me accountable as well. So, yeah. you know, yeah. like my business partners, I train with those as well now. So, yeah. kind of had a we have a, a kind of a business owners meeting in the gym, mm. usually around the squat rack or the bench yeah. press. Yeah, so. that, but that's a really good idea though, because it's you're meeting to train. Yeah. But you know there'll be some work discussed, and yeah. it's it's productive then, isn't it? Yeah, we're also we've got a couple of got a couple of business friends as well who, who come along and train mm. and you can guarantee that um, we, yeah, we might get looked at because we're stood talking around the um, you know, around the tricep press downs yeah. but uh, yeah. what we're doing is talking business and we, we get a lot from that as well and we kind of said we don't, don't need to shy away from that mm. we're all there to train we, if we get a good 20 minutes of training if we yeah. get you know some sprint work on the rower on the bike mm. um, and we can kind of talk before it, it's become a bit more of a kind of a group yeah. thing now yeah. So, yeah. I think if you if you do have that desire to if you're super, super busy and you do have that desire to, to drive your progress forward health-wise, I really do think you'd, you either need to engage a coach, yes. somebody who's going to drive you and hold yeah. you accountable, or you need to do it in the way that you're doing, where you've got a partner and, and that partner's is it be helpful if somebody's better than you or somebody's really driven in the gym yeah. and they're like right we're doing this today we're going through this and it just keeps you focused yeah I completely agree you know if I'm if, if I'm going to enter a, a competition or of, of any sort I'm going to come to someone like yourself yeah. Um, yeah. to write me the programme I dare say that if I was to ever want to get in ridiculously great shape mm. once again yeah. um, I would probably employ a nutritionist to, yeah. to give me the accountability yeah. Yeah. Um, rather than just say alright well this is my diet and give it to my chefs to, to make up for me yeah. you know, I, I do agree that um, the higher up you get in terms of being busy and, and mm. less time for actually doing it it is better to bring on the professionals and mm. let them yeah. show you how it's yeah. done and yeah. tell you how it's done and give you that yeah. accountability it's, it's, it's an interesting concept isn't it that a nutritionist hiring a nutritionist or yeah, yeah. an S&C coach hiring a trainer yeah. or a coach and yeah. I agree with you I think yeah. it's, it's valid and I got one of my colleagues to write me a weightlifting program not so long ago yeah. because I needed that yes. sort of <laughs> that accountability and just to, to outsource it you yeah. do it yourself you, there's a way out there's just a little bit of a there's, a, there's an easy way out for you there yeah and it? it's when you see that text message or the email come through you've not sent your, mm. your data through mm. sending it through you know you've got to send that through yeah um, so yeah. same with you know my clients I have when they're sending me the weight the measurements you know the well-being forms that they have to fill in for me on a regular basis if they don't send it through I'm sure they must dread that text message yeah. coming through fill your forms in or yeah, send your weight exactly. through and yeah, stuff yeah. like that and it's the same for me the busier I am the less likely I am to look after my own health because mm. I'm looking after the mm. business side of things so I make myself accountable to yeah. others alright so a really good discussion yeah. and if you're a super busy business person or, or performer or somebody who's just not got a lot of time to train just start with three sessions a week three 30 minute sessions move your body just, just that's it that's the first thing then you can think about what those sessions need to consist of build a habit slowly make it easy for yourself to do that and you'll see some results just purely by doing that but when you're ready to take it seriously you really need to find somebody it doesn't have to be a coach as such but somebody who's got some knowledge to hold you accountable and I think that'll help you with your training would you agree with that? yeah definitely definitely cool. Thanks for listening, guys. We're going to be back again with another episode and we'll be talking more about nutrition and training and how you can take these things that David and I are discussing and put them into your training or with your clients or in your lifestyle in general. Thanks for listening.